shop. Uh, today I'm going to show you my entry for the Toolmakers Challenge for 2020, uh, which has been hosted by Emma's Spare Room Machine Shop. So I'm not actually making a tool, but I'm making a fixture. But I'm going to, I'm going to include that in the entry anyway, uh, just to partake and to support other Australian machinists here, over here in the great old land of Oz. All right. So this fixture plate that I'm doing, how about I bring the camera around and show you what I'm actually making. Today. So these are for Mark from Phase Change Converters and they're heat sink angle plates that goes inside the three phase uh, rotary phase converters. Uh, they've got to have precise holes uh, drilled in a, a precise location and tapped. So predominantly there's M3 and M4 uh, tapped holes and the tricky one was these two tapped holes on the end here. Now to make these fixtures of course they're a little bit hard to hold in the vise, so I had to make one fixture plate like this, okay, which which held it in this position, okay, and then I had to make another fixture plate that would hold it in the vertical position to drill those holes. Okay, I've repositioned the camera and brought you over to the CNC machine. Uh, you can see that I've, I've manually machined these standoffs on the manual lathe, and of course, uh, basic sort of turning work, so facing, centre drilling, drilling and machine tapping, or commonly referred to as rigid tapping, um, to make this fixture plate. Then I use the CNC machine to make this right angle fixture plate. Now, I don't usually um, host CNC machine videos on this YouTube channel. Uh, if you want to watch those sorts of videos, I'd suggest you go to my main channel, which is called uh, Design, Creativity and Technology Solutions and I do a lot more CAD CAM and CNC on that channel. This channel is predominantly for manual machining. However, I've made this angle plate, okay, and you can see the way that I've jigged all this up. I've got a clamp pushing in from the side on both of these, and I've got these spring-loaded clamps here, which I purchased from the local hardware store. Okay, so the first thing we need to do here today is just to offset this piece in the chuck. We want it to stick out about 80 mil or thereabouts, so I can uh, face it face it, and uh, cut it to length or we'll tighten the old three drawer up. Okay, let's spin this tool around on the hook, on the, uh, on the old Colchester and we'll get it happening. Turn this tool around now, we'll use the parting tool. And this is just an old high speed steel parting tool that I sharpened this morning. And I'll make sure that's parallel to the face by just gently coming in there. So I get my setting, lock it up, bring it out of the way. Now to ensure that I part this off to about the length that I want because the final length will be ascertained when I stick it in the CNC machine and actually face it. So I get them all at the same height, so they're identical. We'll just come in here with our burners, set it up here, just touch off on that, and away we go. Let's uh, let's part this off. Now this is free machine grade aluminium, and that's why it's machining so well. I'm just machining it dry, and I'll pop this off here and grab it. There we have it. And we've got a three flute M10 by 1.5 pitch tap here. And we'll get the uh, lathe RPM up around 72 RPM. And I can just feed this in and it will pull itself in. As long as I don't lock the tail stock and uh, everything will be good. Now I've just got to pay attention here. I'm just going to watch it come down to the shank here. And uh, yeah, you can see the blood on my thumb that I sharpened that uh, parting tool and it bit me. So we're nearly there, we'll stop it, and we'll back it out. And now just as it's coming to the end of the thread here, I'll put a little bit of pressure on the tail stock and it will just uh, float away. Nearly there. I'll start putting a bit of pressure on the tail stock. I've uh, finished tapping these little standoffs, so 
what I need them to do, they have to go into a T-nut uh, with this threaded stud in here. And I'll bolt that into the machine and then surface the top here so they're all exactly the same height. Now I've got it in the old manual uh, combination mill here and I'll turn it on. Now I've got my Y set ready to go and I'll show you by a piece of cigarette paper. If I just gently bring it towards the cutter, you can see it rip it out of my fingers so I know I'm good to go. So I'll back him off down here now. Now one turn of my handle is four mil. Uh, now I have to add six millimetres because it's half the cutter. Okay, so I need a total of 27 millimetres which is six and three quarter turns. And there we have it. So now I'm gonna come off that job here now. And I need to plunge down 4.6 millimeters. So I'll do this in two cuts under power feed. Now the reason for these little tabs is it allows me to put a spanner on there to tighten these up and pull it down tight towards the bed. Should be my final cut now. Alright, I'm going to turn off the uh, mill head now and I'm going to flip that over and do the other side. Okay, I've taken out one of the parallels and just left one of the parallels in and that allowed me to sit it down onto that slot. What I'll do now, I'll take another 4.6 millimetres to get it down to my total width of 21 mil, and I'm just going to do this in one cut. Okay, and away we go. And there we have it. Right, so the proof will be in the pudding. Uh, let's take out the 21 mil spanner and put it on. And you can see there, it's pretty good. I'm very, very happy with that. They'll allow me to lock it in the CNC machine now and face the top there to make sure I've got exact heights. So I've mounted the standoffs in the milling machine via the T-nuts and uh, tighten those up with the spanner. You can see that I've set the spindle nose down on the table. I set my relative position to zero and then went up positive 41 millimetres. So I'm going to run this uh, CNC machine as a manual milling machine at the moment by simply over here, if I can go into MDI and bring up my MDI screen, you can see that I've turned the spindle on. So that's the command M03 clockwise S, so 6000 RPM. Now when I log in, and go to MDI and press cycle start down here or here. The spindle will start. And I've turned down my, my jogging feeds here right down to 20%. So if I go up here to jog now and just manually jog that table across, And uh, there we go guys, all those uh, standoffs are the correct height now.
So let's press cycle start and you can check this out now. From actual, um, from loading, to, to, from loading the pallets, pressing cycle start, opening the door, blowing it off and cleaning it, then reloading, I'm roughly getting about four minutes 30. Now I had 50 of these to do, so you can see uh, this was a whole job and, well a whole full day job. Uh, but not to mention these fixture plates are probably a day's work in themselves as well. So let's press cycle start and let's see this uh, in action here today. Now you can see there's not much room here for error. So I had to be really, really cautious and I'll show you how I set this up today. So I knew that I wasn't going to have crashes and that sort of thing. and tool change now, we'll grab a little tap. Now I believe this is an M3 tap. Now for these M3 tapped holes guys, I actually popped in with a little tiny baby 2mm end mill, okay? And did circular interpolation and bored that hole out to the correct size for the tapping size, which I believe for M3 is 2.5 or 2.5 millimeters. Because the, uh, the pitch is uh, by 0.5 as you would know. Now for a lot of us manual machinists out there, when you see a machine like this doing its uh, job, you can just see how much easier it is and uh, less stressful to, you know, you can just continuously load parts and press the green button and you know each one's going to come out identical to the other. So this is my little four mil tap now. You can see I've got a little bit of swarf on there. I'll fix that. Here we go. We'll drop in with a four mil tap. Now I believe M4, the pitch is 0.7. So the, I used a 3mm end mill to once again do a boring cycle and bring that hole out to um, 3.2. Sorry, it's, uh, yeah, the pitch on that taps 0.7, so the hole had to be 3.3. Um, Here we go, we're dropping back in now. And this will be the end of the cycle, it will finish now. And not bad is it, so 3 minutes 20 roughly to do both those parts. And uh, every time I open the door I've got a completed part that I can bring out. Alright, okay, thank you for following along and uh, please make sure you get a chance to watch the other Toolmaker Challenge videos. Thank you, bye bye.